let's look at drawing a tree diagram. For our first tree diagram, let's look at what it would be if I was to flip a coin and roll a die. Well, when I flip a coin, my possibilities are getting heads or tails. When I roll a die, there are six different sides, so there are six different possible outcomes. My tree diagram will look like this. Heads and tails are my first possibility. And then from each of those, I could roll a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. That means that there are 12 total possible outcomes. Heads with a 1, heads with a 2, heads with a 3, heads with a 4, heads with a 5, heads with a 6, tails with a 1, tails with a 2, tails with a 3, tails with a 4, tails with a 5, tails with a 6. Let's look at another tree diagram. Still flipping a coin, rolling a die, but now let's flip a second coin as our third event. So again, heads or tails for the first coin, six sides on my die, and another coin with the heads or tails. All I do is I take my previous tree diagram and I put in another row of branches. Notice off of each of my last results, because there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails, I need to draw two new branches. Notice with my numbers, I'm consistent, left to right, writing one through six. And then notice with my second coin, I consistently go heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. It makes it easier to read your tree diagram if you always list your data in the same consistent order. So if you prefer to write tails than heads, just write TH consistently from left to right. Insanity. Let's add flipping a third coin. That means off of each of my last red branches, I need, because a coin has two sides, two more branches. And again, I consistently go from left to right. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, etc. This would be the tree diagram for flipping a coin, followed by rolling a die, followed by flipping a second coin, followed by flipping a third coin.